a completely new upgrade system that drastically changes the movement of some legends. Movement tech that was removed without telling us, movement problems that were fixed without telling us, and a whole new map with rollouts and shortcuts. Welcome to Season 20. The most impactful Octane upgrade is to change directions with the double jump on the jump pad. This was already possible with tap strafing before Season 20, but now extends to everyone, whether you don't know how to tap strafe or are on controller. Important to note here, this is not an upgrade applied to Octane, but to the jump pad. So even if you are a different legend, if you see a red jump pad, that means you can change direction on it. And if you are Octane and have the direction change upgrade applied, you won't be able to use it off green jump pads. To change direction, you want to point where you want to go and hold forward and only forward. If you try to change directions after the jump, like with a tap strafe, it won't work. If you hold forward and sideways, you will lose a lot of momentum. So literally just point and hold forward. Above 90 degrees, the direction change is not as strong as a really well executed tap strafe. But you can still do 180 degree turnarounds and 90 degree turns are essentially the same. I would recommend to not land directly on the pad though, as that sometimes gave me the normal double jump without direction change. Tap strafing still works the exact same of green pads and of red jump pads can even be combined with the direction change. It feels much easier to do 270 degree tap strafes on them. And if you delay the lurches a bit, you can even do a direction change in one direction and then tap strafe into the other. And while the effect is not nearly as drastic as some people speculated, it can be used to navigate around obstacles you wouldn't be able to go around otherwise. The other jump pad upgrade is to have two charges of it. This does not decrease the actual cooldown of each jump pad. But you could argue it decreases the effective cooldown, since your next pad already starts charging when you haven't used your first one yet. And it of course results in really nice rotation opportunities. Little tip, you can throw a jump pad onto another one to throw it exactly as far as a standing jump. But if distance is your goal, it's not worth it. Just slide into the first pad, use the double jump and then throw the second jump pad ahead of you so it can activate before you arrive. 25% less dim damage as an upgrade is self-explanatory. But Octane's second upgrade of 25% less explosive damage needs a bit more explaining. Explosive damage is not the same as grenade damage. Thermites, for example, do not count as explosions. The stick of an arc star is also not an explosion, but the explosion of the arc star is. Gibby and Bang Ultimate, Knuckle Clusters, Valkyrie's Rockets and Maggie's Ball are also explosions. All explosive damage will have a push effect on you, but only if it also damages your health. So 25% less explosive damage can have an effect on that. For nade boosting specifically, that means you can no longer nade boost on a blue shield. But it also means you will lose less health when you do it on a white one. And it does not affect how far you get thrown by the nade. So to the 5 or so people that regularly do nade boosts, you decide if this is better or worse. Speaking of nade boosts, I have finished messaging people for the Apex Rollouts 2023 highlight video. If you submitted clips to Apex Rollouts last year and haven't checked Reddit in a while, Please see if you have a message from me. Pathfinder gains access to survey beacons and ring consoles. Whatever, let Raven ramble for 40 minutes about if that is good or not. The third upgrade being tech refresh on Nock is crazy and something all Pathfinder mains have collectively dreamed about for the past 5 years. It can be used to grapple into a fight, knock someone and then out of a fight, or grapple on someone knock them and then grapple even deeper into the fight to chase their teammate. Oh, it's so beautiful. But something that's very important to note here. Getting a knock before the cooldown of your first grapple activates will not refresh your grapple. Because Pathfinder is the only legend with a tactical cooldown that gets longer when you carry the momentum out of a grapple. So as hard as it is, if you want the grapple refresh, don't knock people mid-air or while sliding and bee hopping. Come to a stop first, then knock. Which makes grapple hops into knocking someone a really great way to ensure you'll get your grapple back. Pathfinder's fourth perk of taking 25% less damage on ziplines is similar to the one from Octane. It does not get applied to Pathfinder, but to everyone taking the zipline. This gets indicated with this shiny effect on it. So if you are ziplining directly onto a team, they know what to expect but this effect disappears after 30 seconds. 
I think Respawn want the damage reduction to be a one-off rotation tool instead of something you can set up and use whenever to go back and forth. Another thing you use to go back and forth are trains. I'm sitting in one right now, editing this video, and am locked into the onboard open Wi-Fi, which would expose me to the risk of others intercepting my data and leaking my precious face reveal. If it wasn't for NordVPN, the sponsor of today's video. NordVPN encrypts your data to eliminate risks that come with public Wi-Fi. It offers countless of other benefits as well, like threat protection, shielding you from malware, trackers and ads, access and content, independent from the country you're in, and much more. And because it's the fastest VPN on the market, I don't have to worry about it slowing me down too much. Which would be bad, cause I don't like being slow. Slow bad. Speed good. If you also don't like being slow, you might use the same password of Octane Tapstrafe King 123 on all of your accounts. Come on, you know you should not use the same password on all of your accounts. Thankfully, Nord doesn't just offer a VPN, but also NordPass, their easy to use password manager, so you can use different passwords without having to remember them. If any of that sounds interesting to you and you want to start taking online security seriously, get NordVPN today. With my link in the description or pinned comment, you'll even get an exclusive discount. And you can test Nord for 30 days with a money back guarantee. So there's no risk. Visit nordvpn.com slash mokisniper and be fast and secure today. Valkyrie's upgrade that improves her jetpack handling is a mixed bag. The increase in speed is only 11%. It only increases her horizontal speed, not her vertical speed. With a peak velocity of 311, it is now faster than sprinting, but still not faster than slide jumping. But it also increases her acceleration, not just her top speed. If you're solo queuing in pub games and like fighting in clutch situations and using her passive for dodges and movement, I think it's worth picking. Just don't expect much. If you're taking rank very seriously with a team, the 15% higher ultimate is the much better option. Her upgrade that increases her jet fuel by 25% is self-explanatory. I just wanted to point out that it gives you 1 to 2 extra dodges per tank. Fuse's speed boost on knuckle cluster hits is 30%, which is the sort of standard speed boost and the same as Bangalore or Conduit's passive. Vantage's increased double jump is worth mentioning, but that's about it. The forward jump was only increased a tiny bit. There certainly are situations where this will be helpful, but to me it feels a bit underwhelming. At least the double jump when turning around is much stronger now. But overall this upgrade feels like what she should have as standard. Refreshing her tactical on old hits might actually be the better option. Especially cause it's completely bugged right now. And also refreshes when you deal damage with any other weapon or grenade. Or even deal damage to yourself. I would suspect that this will be fixed, so enjoy this broken mess while you can. Reduced tactical cooldown for Revenant is nice, but there is some confusion about the upgrade that reduces the charge time for his pounds. That is not another cooldown reduction, but makes it faster to charge up your pounds. But in my testing it is barely noticeable. So first I measured it and later LRT and LG gave me the actual values. I'll put a full explanation on Twitter, all you need to know is that it is utterly worthless to the point that in most cases it will give you literally zero benefit and that it's never worth picking over refreshing his tactical on Nox. Loba's increased height and range for her tactical are quite massive. This feels like an actually impactful change. Just be aware that with a max range throw you're also gonna spend longer waiting for it to teleport you. That's not really a negative cause you can still decide to throw it shorter just something to be aware of. And I love that you can spec fully into her tactical or fully into her ultimate. This actually feels like a branching path to two separate playstyles. Conduit's increased tactical range does not increase the range of her passive. The base tactical range is 50 meters, so you will stop getting the passive speed boost at 50 meters, since the passive is designed to get you into tactical range. With the upgrade the tactical range increases to 60 meters, but you will still get her passive until you're 50 meters away from teammates. So there's no nerf to the passive you need to take into account when you choose this upgrade. Newcastle's faster mobile shield is just a tiny bit slower than you are when sprinting with a weapon out. 
So if you throw it a bit ahead of you and put in one or two tiny sprint breaks, you can essentially rush over an open field like this. Sears faster movement with his passive gets him to holster walk speed instead of weapon walk speed. And Rampart's increased handling to Sheila does not affect her movement whatsoever, just how fast she can fire and reload. All other upgrades either don't affect the movement of a legend or are so simple that I got nothing to add beyond their short description. It appears Respawn has secretly messed with some movement tech. Most importantly, how you interact with moving platforms was reworked. They are now split into two categories. The ones Respawn want you to climb, like gondolas or the blast covers in launch site. The good ones. And the ones Respawn does not want you to climb, like sliding doors, the fire range targets and probably some others. The bad ones. The good ones work exactly like before and you will have no problem climbing them while they are moving. The bad ones will not carry you along anymore when you climb them. Or not let you climb them at all. Our theory is that this was to stop snuggle bouncing, where you could use the momentum of sliding doors into a wall bounce. And door launches, where you could use the momentum of guillotine doors to launch yourself. It's a big shame they decided to do that. I can understand trying to curb door launches, since they relied on blocking the door with an item and felt more exploity. But snuggle bouncing was such a fun mechanic that everyone could do and wasn't restricted to mouse and keyboard. There were even plenty of people using it on console. Come on, respawn. Another thing that was removed was the ability to air strafe of gravity cannons with a grapple. Thankfully, you can still get air strafing back when you go over a jump pad that's in the cannon and can use Horizon's lift to activate air strafing. I get that respawn is trying to restrict cannon movement to a simple line instead of opening up the entire space around them. Controlling combat flow and making it predictable from where enemies could be coming from is something they need to design around. I just wish they would keep some of these options, especially if they waste an entire ultimate. Or intentionally enable it on some cannons. Cause damn is it fun. Seer, Newcastle and Horizon used to have worse double jumps off jump pads. It wasn't in the patch notes, but that was fixed and they can now double jump like all the other legends. Something that was in the patch notes are the changes to the first person animations for larger legends like Gibby, Caustic, Newcastle, Revenant and Pathfinder. They now use the animations from medium sized legends. This is especially noticeable while just sprinting. Before season 20 large legends swung their arms back and forth much slower. Now they are faster. This simple change will make movement feel better on these legends, even though nothing changed about the actual sprint speed. On to the new map. I found this rollout to get out of spawn to the A capture point. You can bunny hop off multiple different things here. On the other side of the map I have a challenge for you. After some trying I managed to grapple from this tree onto this platform. My challenge for you is to do that while arriving on the zipline, making it a proper spawn rollout. If you manage to do that, post it to the Apex Rollout subreddit. In general grapple is my favorite tool on this new map, since you can grapple over the skull to make for some crazy rotates around the map. You can zipline up to this pole. You can zipline to the outside wall on this side of the map. There is a bit of unclipped geometry on top of the spawn, which lets you get under the map. Here are some super glide shortcuts. Here are some mantle jump spots.
On this zip I can get on top of the pipes with a super jump, so I know it works. My mental jumps just aren't perfect enough to pull it off. And on this one you can land on the edge so you can immediately super glide out of it. I did it once, but wasn't recording. If you place a jump pad here and don't slide, but jump into it crouched, you can smoothly slide into the skull. Here are some climbing routes I discovered. This one does not work with normal climbing, but if you input a sideways input at the very top, you can make it up. Here is another one of my movement videos and maybe consider subscribing.